All right, let's see if we can get out of here without running anybody over. I got a whole bunch of stuff going on out in front of the house. <laughs> it's the way it works. Hitting nothing or nobody. I was talking, I hollered at him today. He said, I said, hey man, y'all, what y'all doing today? I said, yeah, yeah. Y'all pouring concrete or y'all just making it for me? He said, oh, you know something. Go grab your float. I said, no, sir. No, oh, sir. Them, them days are over for me. He's talking about the guys out here? Yeah, he said, go grab your float. Let's get it on. I'm like, yeah. It's getting ready to rain, so I know they're not getting ready to pour. No, now. no, they're not pouring today. They're just forming up today. All right. So it's Jellico and I again today. Jellico has been uh, really helpful and been doing just a lot in terms of helping after prison show, and it's been a major asset in everything that we've been doing as of late. And it's because of Jellico that we're getting ready to go do something really exciting today as well and that's getting ready to go meet a new guy yeah a new guy man uh, i've talked to him since the day he's got out uh there's a bunch of people that i talked to on their way out um some people that i talked to while incarcerated I, I i guaranteed them if they got up with me that i would help them in any way shape or form um this is not just an after prison show thing this is just this is a jellico thing i help people who come to my city in particular because i know the resources that are available anywhere from food stamps to medicaid you know this guy's getting his teeth worked on everything man he's doing he's using all his resources to the max man this is it's pretty awesome guy here well let's talk about who this guy is his nickname is what jew man jew man j-u-m-a-n and what do you know anything about like why he has the nickname jew man i'm not really sure not really sure well this guy's got a very interesting story nonetheless and the first thing to mention about this guy is the amount of time that he served in prison yes how long did he do he did 31 years if i'm not exact the exact number but i know it's over 31 years 31 years i mean can you imagine that being in prison wow. for over 30 years is just it's a long time to be in prison he's been locked up since what like the 80s yes i can't remember exactly when but it, it it's been a long time man and he's a very humble individual very calm and quiet you know a lot of people who've done time you know what i'm saying they don't they don't want no problems they're just quiet they're straight and to the point you know what i'm saying it, your word is gold if you say something's going to happen you know what i'm saying that's going to happen and i i met him i met him through a small little hustle when he when i met him in the pod he, he was in the last dorm before I went home. So, so what, uh, oh, this last time that you were locked yes, up? Yes, this last time, yeah. So you met him at St. Bride's? Yes, sir. And, you know, what? what's his backstory? I mean, obviously, with the fact that he served 30 years in prison or more than 30 years, you know, what? why did he go to prison? Do you know that? It's robbery. Uh, he got, It was robbery as a youngin. You know, a lot of people will catch some robbery charges, you know, basically when they're you're, they're still babies. You know what I'm saying? So what happens is they get, they get smoked as a youngin and they have to do these massive amount of these massive amount of years just you know I call them simple mistakes but robbery is robbery but and you know so they got to give you a certain amount of time and though I, whether I think it's right or wrong or not I mean it's that's just what happens. It, 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 that's what happens well even more interesting to add to this the fact that this man served over 30 years in prison his nickname is Jew man this is a guy that I don't know Jellico vouches for this guy so the only thing that I really know about this guy is the video that you sent me of him. I've seen his personality yeah. and his persona. He seems like a very interesting individual. But to add to that interest is the fact of how long has this guy been released now? Just, I'm, I want to say maybe 60 days. He's been re released after 30 years for only two months. Yeah. And talk about where he's working. He's working He's working for But yeah, he got on through, through a family member. He, 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 get, he goes all the way from Virginia Beach all, all the way to Portsmouth. Doesn't I mean, drive, doesn't, doesn't have drive, transportation. Nah. He has a good family support system, and that's that's what's been helping him. You know, people motivating him along. I've known him for some time. I've drove him to DMV, to TCC, and stuff like that, trying to get him. You know, it's just some things aren't as easy as everybody seems to think. You know what I'm saying? He can get his license, too. I mean, it's just a matter of time. You know, it's just he needs to, he's been studying for the test. The guy has served 30 years in prison. He's been home for two months, and he's already got a really good job. And he's working with a company that I didn't even think hired felons. Yeah. So this is news to me. Yeah. We're on our way right now to go meet with Jew Man. Yep. And you guys are going to get a chance to meet this guy for the very first time. And it's my hope and the hopes of After Prison Show to be able to bring you this guy's story and his adaption after three decades in prison. So we're almost... 
at Jew Man's. And where is he staying at? This guy's staying with family? Family, yep. You know, it's interesting because everybody comes home with a different struggle. Yes. Uh, some people don't have the family support. Some people do. Uh, everybody's story is different. Yeah. And this guy, luckily, luckily enough, has the family support. And that's just one step in the right direction to help him get reestablished out here. And do I need to get over? Yes. And with him being so fresh home after so much time in prison, that's definitely got to be a major help factor for him. Yeah, man. That's, I mean, if, if it wasn't for my family and such, man, I wouldn't be anywhere. Granted, I did it on my own halfway house and then, you know, but generally, man, just the love and support, man, it's just a, it's a big difference. You know what I'm saying? That's why uh, I think after the prison show is important because it, a lot of people don't have anybody. And this is, take a left here, the, the camaraderie that we have as former inmates, you know what I'm saying? Uh, people doing time. It's just, it's just, we have an understanding, you know, of, of each other and the struggles that we've all had. And that's what makes After Prison Show so great to me, you know. It's, well, it's a pleasure having you as a part of this, Jellico, And you've, you've added a lot of energy and just good stuff to what we've been doing already. And I'm just excited to see, uh, you know, what the future holds. And this is a perfect example of that right here, going to meet this new guy. All right, well, we're He's almost up. here. He's almost, he's up here on the right, parked by the bush. And uh, we're getting ready to introduce you to Jew Man, right here. The park by the bush, right there. There's the garage right there. All right, so we have arrived at Jellico's buddy's house. This is Jew Man. Yes, Jew Man. Jew Man, I did time with him in St. Bride's. St. Bride's my last little bit, my last little bit right before I got home, and I talked to him a lot about what we can get into when he starts getting home and some of the things he might need help with at, since he's been down so long. Yeah, well, let's see, uh, let's go meet, let's go meet him. You called him and let him know that we were here, Yeah, right? I let him know that we were on our way. I'd hate to just walk in and, What's uh... What's up, you man? How are hey, you doing, man? This, this oh, is right. Joe, man. How you, how you doing, man? How you doing? All right. Okay, doing man, how right. you doing, man? Jew man, pleasure to meet you, man. Pleasure Joe, to meet you. Uh, give you an introduction to the world real quick. I apologize for having the camera <laughs> blazing like this. So right, so right. Dude, man, uh, it's a pleasure to get a chance to meet you for the first time. And Jellico spoke so highly of you. Yeah, man. You know, um, shit, man. I've been up in that joint 31 years, man. You 31 know, uh, years. 31 years. 31 years, man. You know, um. Uh, and to be out here now, man, enjoying myself like this right here, man, it's, it's amazing, man. Yeah. How long have you been out for? I've been out now less than, well, over, a little over two months. Wow. You know, um, and it's been great, man. I can't, you know, I can't lie to you, man. It's been great, you know. And I can't, I can't say it enough, man, you know, how much family been here for me. You know, Jellico spoke about that, spoke about the fact that you have family support right. and we're at your family's house right now? We're at my family house right now, man. Uh, it's my sister, you know, uh, and she doing, she's not here right now, but she, you know, Jellico met her. Uh, man, she, she been great, man, you know. Well, special shout out to your sister. Yeah, special shout out to my sister, man. You know, with her help and everything, man, you know, it's just been, it's, it's been amazing, man, you know. I even got money in my pocket, man. Listen, <laughs> man okay. Listen, I got money in my pocket. Heck yeah, you know man. I, mean? I never would have thought that I would have money like this here. You know what I mean? To flash around or, or just to do, you know, I don't even know what to do with this money, man. Well, Jellica told me that you're working. Are we able to go uh, in here at all to get out of the yeah, wind yeah, a little come bit? Come on up in here. Okay. Yeah. Damn. Yeah, come on up in here, man. All right. Your sister's got the spot hooked up for you, man. You, got... this, this just, you know, this is just a garage, man. You know, um, she got, you know, her her daughter got kids, man. And they, you know, this is where they come to play at. Heck yeah. You know, uh, I come out here at times. Yeah, this is where we hang out, man. When yeah, I come, this when is where I come, I come over. This is when yeah. I come over. This is where we come to hang out, man. That's right. Me and my know? girl came over the other day. We were hanging out here with him and his sister, just hanging out. You know? Yeah. Heck nice yeah. Nice vibe. Nice right. Let me get out of the fan. Okay. Well, the first thing that I want to say, Jew Man, is I greatly appreciate, and that's your that's your nickname, right? That's my nickname. My real name is William. Well, William, Jew Man, it's a real pleasure to get a chance to speak with you right. and get a chance to meet you. Okay. And, and one thing that I got to say, I mean, this is just 
an immediate first impression of you. Right. You have done 31 years in prison. 31 years, man. And to see you out here, like, with your head held high and to be just so positive and with so much energy, I know that's got to be an amazing feeling after being yeah, locked up for so yeah, long. it is. You know, and like I said, man, you know, uh, I've seen guys that have done less time than I have that was, you know, that was messed up in the head mentally, man. Because they didn't have what I have, which is family supporting me, man. You know, it, family support is, man, that's that's the world doing time. To a guy doing time, to have family support, man, that's, that mean the world, man. You know, and I wouldn't be like I am, you know, after 31 years without them, you know. It's a real blessing to have it's that support. It's a real blessing, man. It's a real blessing to have family behind you, man. Look, Jellico has told me a little bit of you uh, with the fact that you've served so much time in prison. You've only been out for a short period of time. Right. And you're out here working already. Talk a little bit about right, that real quick. Right, right. I'm working uh, with this contractor through. Um, and, you know, it ain't much, but, hey, it's $10 an hour, man. All I'm doing all day long is strewing in light bulbs and, you know, ex I mean, exchanging light bulbs, man. It's beautiful, man. You right. Know, I look forward to even, you know, to going to work, you know, five days a week, man. You know, uh, it's, it's beautiful, man. You know, like I say, I, I got money, plenty of money in my pocket. You know what I mean? Uh, I don't even look, you know, I don't even think about going out here doing any kind of wrong. You know, because there's so much, it's, man, it's, it's so much out here right now for me to have, man. And I'm just trying to take advantage of it, you know. You know, when I think about somebody who served the amount of time that you have, the attitude that you have is not what comes to mind at all. Right. It is positivity. It, it is right. energetic just getting this chance to meet you. That's right. You know, and you speak about family being a big reason uh, why you're able to be as positive and energetic as you are right you know so it's a really interesting thing for me and I, I got to thank you especially for allowing me to get the opportunity to meet you and for your willingness to allow us to talk to you on camera right. and be willing to share your story I know that this was something that Jellico had spoken to you about at the in the past and this is something that you have no experience with but you know are you okay with all of this is this okay uh, man it's, it's okay you know because I feel like people like myself, our story need to be put out there or people need to really actually see what's, you know, what's real, man, what's, what's actually going on. You know, uh, you read books or you may even see a, a, a story on the news, you know what I mean, real live TV, the news. But it's nothing like actually being up close and personal like this with somebody that done done time in prison man and don't mind sharing their story you know I want people to know what I went through in prison you know because it's a lot to be learned there you know good and bad you know um, that's what I feel like we put on earth for is to go through experiences in life man and I <laughs> I've been through it all you know, would you be willing to share a little bit of what caused you to do the 31 years? Yeah, yeah, I wouldn't, I wouldn't mind at all, man. Um, uh, you know, just hanging out, you know, me, my brother, and a friend, man. You know, just running around trying to get during that time, the 80s. You know, it was all about the girls. You know, trying to have, you know, as many girls or women in your life as possible, man. So the things that we did to get the girls, you know, um, <clears throat> landed us in prison, you know, for the for the most part, you know, because you couldn't have girls if you ain't had no money, you know. Back then, during the 80s, you know, uh, all the dope boys or whatever had the girls. That was our thing, you know, the girls. So in order to compete with the dope boys, we had to have money. So we went out. We started robbing and sticking up, you know, and it landed us in prison, man, you know. And when I think about it now, when I ask myself, was it all worth it, 
No, it wasn't. You know, because out of all those things that I did wrong just to get this girl, what did she do to get me? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know? And 31 years later, here you are. And 31 years later, man, here I am, you know. I look at myself and I ask myself all the time, if I hadn't have never went to prison 31 years ago, what would I be now? You know what I mean? What would my life actually be if I hadn't have went to prison? Would I have my own house like my sister have here? You know, would I already be married? You know, would I have kids? Right now, I don't have no kids. How old are you? I'm 50 years of age, man. 50 years old? I'm 50 years Hold old. Hold on, man. I got to get my reaction to that. Okay. You 50 years old? I look like I'm 50 years old. I ain't but 36. You look like you're younger than me, man. Listen, man. I, I went to prison at age 18. I am 50 years old right now, man. I'll be 51 this year, this November. I'll be 51 years old, man. And, you know, I lost a lot of life out here. Now, it may seem, I ain't saying this to be funny or anything like that, but man, I have never even been to Bush Gardens, Kings to Millions, or none of that, man. You know, because of the lifestyle I was living as a youngin', man, as an 18-year-old dummy. If I can go back and talk to that 18-year-old dummy, man, it's a whole lot I would like to say to him, but I can't. So the only thing I can do is talk to the 18 year olds and 19 year olds or, or them youngins that's out here right now. Them dummies. Them dummies, <laughs> you know. And let them know, man, what you think is cool or what you think is thorough or what you think is gangster ain't really that. Gangster is being smart, you know, or to be smart about what you're doing, you know. And the best way to do that it's to just fly right. You know what I mean? Organize something legitimate. You know, I got to say this, and I probably said something similar to this just a little while ago, but to think about the fact that you have spent three decades in prison mm -hmm. and to see uh, your how articulate you are when you speak, to see, you know, the level-headedness that you have, I mean, that is a truly, truly amazing thing because I can imagine there were many times throughout the time that you spent that damn near broke you down hmm. yeah that's right it has man you know i've lost since i've been the 31 years that i've been in prison man i've lost my grandfather my grandmother two uncles my oldest sister a niece and three cousins man you know and in fact right before i got out a week before i got out I lost a third uncle who was, man, who was looking forward to me coming out here. You know, uh, I lost him a week before I got out. He had so much planned for me and him to get into. And then to come out here, you know, I had to, on Memorial Day, I, I, I went to his grave, man, you know. Uh, <laughs> You know, it's, 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 it's just, it's devastating, man. Uh, I got a seven-year-old nephew who made a, I think it's, it's, it's a little funny to me, but out here in the front yard, he made a little grave out of some Play-Doh, you know, the uh, little Legos. He made a little grave, a little play grave, and said that that is where my uncle is buried at right there. So, and he don't allow nobody to walk on that, that little grass site right there or whatever. It's right here in front of the uh, uh, house, man. You know, and it's funny to me, you know, but I like seeing him, you know, in that mode right there, man. Because, you know, it shows that, you know, he is learning a little bit about life right now on a serious note. He ain't just one of them little seven-year-olds that's, that's going to end up out here in the street doing what I did. To spend 31 years in prison, man. You know, so like I say, without family support, 
man, I don't know where I would be. You know, I didn't have to go to a halfway house. I didn't have to do any of that, man. I came straight home to all this love, man. And it's beautiful. Again, I want to thank you for allowing us to come over here and to meet you, to also introduce you to After Prison Show. And from what Jellico has told me, I know that there is a lot mm. to not only your story, but also to all of the time that you have served and everything that's going on with you now, right. now that you're back out here into the free world, after so long being incarcerated with such a positive and energetic outlook. And I'm really looking forward to being able to share that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm man, I'm looking forward to sharing it, you know? Um, because like I said, you know, I've learned a lot. I've been through a lot. And I feel like, you know, there's a lot of people out here, man, that can benefit from my story, from the things that I've been through, man. I am, I'm not gonna hold anything back, you know, um, I am who I am, you know, um, like I say, man, it's just, man, I, just, I got to keep throwing family out there because without family, I probably would have been on medication or something like that, you know, throughout them 31 years, man, you know, the things that I've, I've seen, heard, and done, you know, a lot of people have cracked up under those same type of pressures, man and have, you know, come out on medication. I don't need to take Tylenol, <laughs> you know. Man, I'm so good because of family support, man. I'm so happy. And family then showed me that the world is the limit. You know, all I got to do is get off my ass and go get it. Well, I'm definitely looking forward to seeing you do just that. You're already doing just that with the fact that you're working. Right. You've only been home for a little bit over two months now. That's right. That's right. And seeing where you're going to go from here. Hey, man, from here, <clears throat> I look forward to possibly meeting a young lady, man, you know, and, uh, and starting a relationship with her. I don't have any kids. You know, but if she have, you know what I mean, one or two, that wouldn't hurt, you know. I just look forward to doing my grown man thing right now, man. You know, uh, making a life for myself, you know. Uh, and whatever I have to do to do that, you know, I will on a positive note, you know. Uh, I, I can honestly say that my days of committing crime is over. Well, my name is William. You know, uh, guys call me Jew, man. I developed that throughout the streets, you know, during my time of my youth. Uh, and it stuck with me. I went to prison in 1987, you know, for two counts of armed robbery, five counts of robbery. Uh, I did 31 years, you know, and uh, for 31 years, I've learned a lot, I've seen a lot, done a lot, you know. Can't really say that all my days have been bad in prison because they wasn't. You know, um, I met some really great people in prison. So, you know, that was a plus. I've learned a lot of things from a lot of people in prison, you know, uh, even about myself and dealing with other people. I've learned about myself. I think I really have a great story, you know, to tell. You know, my main focus, though, is to try to talk to the youngins out there, you know, the young generation, you know, that's coming up, you know, to teach them or to show them, you know, the correct way or the right way of doing things, the ones that feel like they know it all, you know, that they know everything. Trust me, it's a whole world out there that you don't know about. Out here and in 